Hi gamers, it's 3DS here. So, we're going to be doing a different type of video today. We're going to be doing a scripting tutorial. This is a type of video I've never done before, and this will probably be my first of many of these type of videos, hopefully. So, why are we doing Bubblegum Simulator for this first game that we're going to be doing? This game is simple and has some concepts that we could teach that will be useful when we try to do more complex games that have, well, actual anti-cheats. This game sure as hell doesn't, so let's go to and join the game. Now, uh, we'll have to wait for the game to load. It has to do its thing. And, okay. Just make sure the audio isn't on. Yeah, good. Don't want to get a copyright strike. But, uh, wait for the game to load. Okay. So, now we're loaded into the game. Let's do the first thing we always do with these type of games. And let's uh, do a strip dump. Now, this strip dump takes around one to three minutes. It depends on your speed of your computer and um, how big the game is. But for this game, it'll probably take around two minutes. While we do that, let's execute a remote spy. Remote spy is a pretty simple script. It relogs remotes at all the game calls, every single one of them. There used to be ways of getting around this, and, well, there used to be ways of getting around this and knocking your remote's call, but those games are long over, and you're, if, if a remote is called, you could pretty much guarantee that it will go through remote spy nowadays, as all the methods of getting around it, such as localization, are now patched, so let's blow a bubble, and you can probably see that this event is called. Now, the naive person would go through and immediately see that the remote storage dot blank, which, which would see, signify bad news for them as they wouldn't know how to, which event to call. Now this is basic obfuscation, and we have a lot of ways to gain around this. So let's wait. And yep, the script is ready. So let's open this up in studio and wait for it to do its thing. And first thing we always do is we check nail. And nothing there. Some games, specifically more advanced ones, they try to hide their scripts in nil. This one isn't one, so we're usually fine. Let's go to player scripts and let's take a look at the player scripts in there. Nothing, so... Uh, client script. This is probably it. Oh, haha, ha, very funny. Now, uh... I probably see there's this network uh, thing that we're going to want to... Now, network is usually a good... Thing to target. If you can find this anywhere, this usually is pretty interesting as it usually controls the uh, event that would be fired to the server. As probably see, this one, I guess, what it seems to do is that it generates a remote event at runtime. This is probably to prevent basic script kitty stuff, so we're gonna have to get this local. Now, uh, getting this local is pretty easy, but let's, let's teach how to do that. So we're gonna make a Function called find local. We'll do a name. Okay. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate over all the functions that have been defined in well the game. So we're gonna do IV and pairs get GC. This will go through every single function defined in the game. There's no way around this and that the game developer can do. You'll get every single function. Now, there's something important here. You want to make sure that the function you get is not defined by Synapse, because if you do, you could get crashes because of how internals of how Synapse works and our stuff garbage you probably don't want. So what we do is, first of all, we want to check if it's even a function in the first place, and we want to make sure it's not a, a Synapse function. Then we could go to and start going through the next stage. Once you make sure it's not a sound function, we could go through and iterate over the up values list that the function has. So we could go to and debug that get up values uh, v do, and we'll go through and iterate over the up values. If you don't know what an up value is, an up value is pretty much a local variable outside of the scope that the function was defined in. I'll give you an example pretty quickly. So a equals one. If you make a local function called b and print out a, this is an up value because it will be transferred across the stack when the function is called. So if we set a to 2, this will generate a set and get up value instruction, and this will just set it in the higher stack. That's pretty simple, but it gets it'll get more complex as time goes on.
So once we go and get all the app values, what we want to do is we want to do we want to check if the name of the app value is the one we want. And if that's the case, then just return it. Now there's some there's some games that try to trick you by making up values that are fake. This game isn't one of them, but we'll add checks for those when the time comes that the games that actually use that. So we'll do network equals find local and well network. So we can just check if our thing will work. And we'll check. Uh, and we can see, yep, the table is correct. So let's iterate over this. Do I'm gonna have to make a edit my little RC file after this because pretty clearly do files being auto corrected. And it's probably C. Boom. Call invoke server, and we have all of the stuff we want. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to start farming, which is pretty easy enough. So we're going to do a while loop. Uh, so we'll just do network fire server low bubble. And we'll just we'll add a check to, so we could kill this later on if we need to. So kill auto farm and return end. Now, uh, more advanced rippers don't like G. This is a good thing. G is generally bad to use because it transfers to other strips even if the, if the even if someone doesn't want to, and it could cause us issues. Now, usually in the case of we are is honestly fine, but for more complex scripts, I don't recommend you do what I'm doing here. So, probably see it will start spamming everything we want. Now we have a little problem here. Well. Yeah, our bubble's full. We're gonna have to sell. So let's uh, kill it first of all. G dot kill auto farm equals true. And now since the event is stopped, we could we could go and sell. Probably see. Oh, look here. So we're gonna have to uh, teleport to the to the place where they can sell and start selling. So let's do that quickly. So we're gonna have to get the amount of uh, bubbles that this per that you can have. So we're gonna have to use decks for this. Now, so you could do the more complex way and more honestly more elegant way of actually going through the script and getting the amount that the user has. But I'm too lazy, and honestly, I don't think anyone here cares enough. So let's go through and screen GUI stats frame bubble. And we can probably find the amount. Let's see if this is correct. And we find text. Yep, that is correct. So we have correct found the actual place in the player's list we can actually go to. So what we want to do is when we after we blow a bubble, we're gonna to want to get the uh we're gonna get a uh bubble amounts equals game dot get service players dot local player dot player gy dot screen gy dot stats frame dot bubble dot amount dot text oh boy that's a lot of junk so once we get that we don't want to do is a string split and we can just split it by little slash So we now have the amounts. So what I want to do is want to go to uh, current bubbles equals two number bubble amounts one and the uh, max bubbles equals current the bubble amounts two. Now this these are corresponding to the amount of bubbles you currently have and the maximum you could have. Then we can add a check if the current bubble, if your current bubbles is bigger or equal to the, your max bubbles, then we could sell. So what we want to do is a fire server. And what we want to do is a wait here too because it might not update until after we fire. So what we want to do is a teleport sell. And a cell bubble cell. So 
Let's, uh, that is false. And let's run it. As you probably see, it'll start spamming, and then we could wait, and it'll probably work this time around. Let's wait for it to do its thing. And wait for it to do its thing. And as you can probably see, boom, it started selling. And now we have a fully working auto farm for this game. Now it won't work if you buy the infinite uh, bubbles game pass, but I'm too lazy to add support for that. And I'll leave that an exercise for you at the end. Now this is probably going to be the end of this video. We're going to be going to more complex games as time goes on, but as you probably see, this one works perfectly. And we can now, uh, well, auto farm in this game at least. More complex games won't be as easy as this. We're not to reverse engineer far more complex uh, anti-exploits than we have right now, but this is pretty simple. Anyways guys, see you in the next video. Peace out.